Welcome to the C.S. Joseph Podcast. I'm your host, C.S. Joseph, hashtag yours truly, hashtag obvious, and hashtag still on the swing, enjoying myself with this amazing weather here in downtown Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It is the dopest. All right, so guess what? Another INTJ question. Not that you guys are completely shocked, but uh, we got a lot of INTJ paying customers, so that's what happens. Also, by the way, like if you guys aren't aware of this, csjoseph.life forward slash coaching. We're having a coaching sale. It's the summer sale. You might want to get in on the sale. Buy coaching. Uh, get your friends verified. You know, CS verified. Verify your types and whatnot. What's really great about verification is that, like, for some reason, if for some reason, like, you don't resonate, we usually do like a courtesy session, follow up for no charge. Maybe we actually bring in other coaches and whatnot, and actually help get to the bottom of what your type actually is. Then afterwards, once it has been verified. You get your CS Verified tag on the Discord server, which gives you access to a private channel that Chris Taylor and I hang out in on a regular basis. And we all work together to forward the science together. It's pretty awesome. So if you want to have that opportunity, get CS Verified. csjoseph.life forward slash coaching. It's not hard. It's awesome. And by the way, if you're a Journeyman member or an Acolyte member, and each, each one of those uh, member levels has like their own discount for coaching that stacks and it will stack with the sale, you can get it like mega cheap right now. That way you can actually have uh, other people in your life uh, verified pretty easy. You know, like a gift or a birthday present or something, you know? Who doesn't need the, or who doesn't want to have the gift of understanding themselves? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, advertisement over. So yeah, um, is it wrong that uh, I actually forgot what the question was? It was an INTJ question. It's kind of ridiculous, you know? Let's see if I can remember. Ah. How can... Oh yeah, I got it. So how do INTJs teach or should they teach? Should INTJs teach? This is such a great question. Actually, um, sometimes I get bored out of my mind from uh, answer so many INTJ questions, but every now and then we get a great question. This is a great question. So, all right. Have you guys actually like watched the film uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio called Catch Me If You Can? It's a story about Frank Abagnale and Frank Abagnale is an INTJ. Uh, he's an INTJ and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is playing this INTJ and it's it's a really great film. It's a, it's a fantastic movie. It even has Christopher Walken in it. It's, it's just great. So, being an INTJ, should they teach? Well, Frank Abagnale did, right? Like he was, he was doing it because he was running from the law because he was a paper hanger. A paper hanger is a, uh, uh, basically a check fraudster, check fraud. Uh, and he's been doing check fraud and running from the law his whole life. The FBI has been chasing him down. He's on the most wanted list for a very long time. And uh, he, he was a very well accomplished social engineer. And he would, uh, I think he went to Columbia University. I think it was Columbia or, might be a different university. I always get them mixed up. But uh, he actually impersonated a professor at the university. And he actually taught, uh, was it physics or chemistry uh, or some high level math? It was, it was a very difficult subject that he was teaching. And when after the FBI caught him, they're like, hey, you've never had any formal education whatsoever, especially the subject. How did you get away with teaching this class in uh, university for so long? And Frank Abagnale's response was, well, I just read one chapter ahead of the class. That's all he did. That was his method. Brilliant method. Very brilliant. And it's because of brilliance like that, that we often, you know, don't even realize like, you know, all these different opportunities. <laughs> but that's how he, the INTJ, uh, taught. Uh, what should an INTJ teach? You know, INTJs are really good at project management. I actually have an INTJ project manager. Uh, he takes care of the guys. He does a really good job. Everyone on the team stays productive. And he's very organized. And that's, that's fantastic. But would he make a really good teacher? Depends. How do you define teacher? Are you defining teacher by like, 
a one-to-many relationship or teacher on a one-to-one -one relationship? Like, which one is it? So I maintain that INTJs are amazing at being the master, right? The master and the apprentice relationship. You know, only two there are, a master and an apprentice. The Sith, you know, going the Sith way, right? I mean, hey, Emperor Palpatine is an INTJ. And we found out recently that Darth Vader is actually an ENTP. So that was their master apprentice relationship. So yeah, definitely. INTJs can teach, but only within that context, or they should only teach within that context. Would I recommend they actually become a teacher? Like an actual school teacher? No. First of all, they're triple pragmatic and all of the affiliative rules would be consistently getting in the way of how they actually would want to teach uh, their students. And honestly, I've never really met a successful INTJ teacher, or at least an INTJ teacher that actually liked being a teacher, especially with all the affiliative rules and all the affiliative crap, as well as the brainwashing that goes on in schools consistently. It would just really piss off their TE parent and their TI critic on a regular basis. And their FI child would start like not feeling good about itself. Could you imagine going to work and being like, wow, I feel like a really bad person because here I am, uh, you know, uh, what was it? Brainwashing these students. Great. When I could actually be conferring upon them actual skills that have value instead of this crap. Well, that's why an INTJ actually ends up having that master role and they take on that master role a lot better. So really they should just actually have one student at a time and pour everything they have into that one student. I would actually even give similar, um, similar advice to, um, uh, to INFJs and also ESTPs because ESTPs have INFJ subconscious. I've noticed like, you know, ESTPs when they do teaching, they are really good at teaching one person at a time. And the same thing goes with INFJs. Although INFJs can, you know, teach crowds or uh, hosts of people, they can absolutely do that. Plato did, Jesus did. They have that capability and skill. But they really need to make sure that they have mastery over their subject and are literally acting like a master and not necessarily like, you know, a public school teacher in the United States of America, you know what I'm saying? Or Western society at all. It's just, it's completely ridiculous and not something I would ever actually recommend, you know, like, why? Why would you do that to yourself, you know? so. It, and that's really what it comes down to. And I mean, especially now, especially, you know, because like right now, you know, our future is, it's, it's pretty dark. It's pretty bleak. Let's be straight. You know, we're in a grand solar minimum right now. There's mass famine, war is around the corner. Things are going to get really, really bad. And for the first time in a while, blue collar skills are going to be way more important than white collar skills, especially since a lot of white collar skills are actually going to be handed over to AI systems, right? So as a result of that, you know, there needs to be masters out there for all of the upcoming apprentices to be able to handle that work. And who does it better? INTJs. INTJs, you know, I've, I've often referred to INTJs with the moniker of jack of all trades, master of all. Basically, as soon as they pick up a skill, they can master that skill and they can master it faster than everybody else, but they lose that skill faster than everybody else because if they don't practice it. But if an INTJ focuses on one particular skill and they go out of their way to master that skill, it makes them the master pretty quickly and they can confer that knowledge and that skill onto other people, i.e. apprentices. So like very, very small group of apprentices or just one apprentice who will eventually inherit their master's work, okay? So like becoming a you know apprentice and then becoming a, a journeyman, etc., and then eventually a master. You know, that entire process. Well, guess what, folks? It's coming back. And honestly, it's INTJs who will be leading in that area because they will be the masters as they are the masters of all the skills in the world. And they'll be the ones who will be able to confer those skills upon their apprentices. That's ultimately our future because how else is the human race going to survive with the huge tumultuous future that we actually have? So INTJs need to be ready to be able to take on these particular roles to become the master. It's very critical for our race, very critical for Western society, if it still exists. You know, especially when you start reading about Revelation chapter 17 and talk about Babylon, you know, the lady who is uh, sitting on the beast, which is the Statue, of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, which gets annihilated. So you might wanna pay attention to that. But the point is like, honestly, like regardless of that, 
regardless of biblical prophecy, our future really, really sucks. So, and INTJs need to be ready to become the masters of those skills and confer those skills upon others because traditional public schools and teaching is dying out. And as much as the church is dying out because the age of Pisces is over, with the age of Pisces being over, so also is public schools. They're done. Most, most parents in my generation prefer homeschooling over uh, public schools. And they're actually organizing their lives in such a way so that you know mothers of children can be stay-at-home mothers and actually facilitate homeschooling instead of trusting their children in a public schooling situation because no one, parents no longer, trust the state to raise their children. And that's just gonna continue to get worse. And then eventually the state itself will collapse and be defunct because you know, no, one, no one's allowing their children to become uh, brainwashed by the state narrative. You know, Common Core, for example, like it's still a narrative, right? You know, so like, it's funny because like, speaking to an ESFJ uh, mother recently who has eight children, and she homeschooled five of her eight children. And she said like the first five of her children who were homeschooled uh, were very capable, amazing human beings. But her final three children who went into public school, uh, they have adopted this toxic set of liberal values uh, that basically is anti-family, uh, you know, anti-morality, uh, ultimately unethical. And uh, it, because and it's caused a huge divide in her family, you know, and she's like, and the thing is, is that a lot of uh, generations of new parents these days already understand this concept. So they're fighting back by going out of the way to facilitate the opportunity uh, to homeschool their children, which is also why there's new legislation recently that's been created to prevent people from homeschooling. You might want to look that up. It's kind of scary. So anyway. <sighs> Yeah, it's a, it's a big deal. I'm working on my farmer's tan right now. I wonder if you folks can actually notice. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, should, should INTJs be, be teachers? I mean, depends. I mean, if, it, if it's from a master and an apprentice point of view, yes, absolutely. If it's like a school teacher in like a public school system or university professor, hell no. Stay away from it. Burn it down and don't look back. Lest you turn into a pillar of salt. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.